In this video, the paper title, An Interactive Teaching Learning Approach to the Design of Robust Linear Control Systems Using the Closed-Loop Shaping Methodology will be presented. This is a joint work from Professor Sebastian Dormido and Dr. Jose Manuel Diaz from Spanish Distance University, UNED, and Dr. Ramon Costa Castello from Catalan Polytechnic University, UPC. The goal of this presentation is introducing a methodology to introduce students in sophisticated concepts and linear control theory. In the following we will present the assumed framework and ladder an interactive tool designed to help students during their learning process will be presented. In this work, the conventional control loop, shown in the figure, is assumed, as it is the case in most control system design. The main goals are guaranteeing closed-loop stability, providing good performance, which can be translated as tracking references, rejecting disturbances and being insensitive to noise. Finally, handling plant uncertainty is also a major concern. This work focuses on frequency domain design techniques. Frequency domain is one of the most powerful controller design methods. Frequency is a magnitude used in other engineering fields so it can be used to introduce automatic control in many engineering degrees. Frequency domain allows to characterize performance and robustness simultaneously. In most introductory courses, basic methods to shape the open loop frequency response are discussed. Loop shaping is one of the usual methodologies to design controllers in the frequency domain. This can be performed interactively and most popular software tools, such as MATLAB, provide tools which allows to do this. The authors have developed a free tool which allows to perform open loop loop shaping interactively. The tool can be obtained for free following the indicate link. Open loop loop shaping is an indirect method because performance is defined through closed loop transfer functions. Additionally, Open loop loop shaping requires looking simultaneously to gain and phase in the bowed plot. The effect of design limitations is not so straightforward to see, so it is difficult for the students to see their effect. Additionally, some students get lost in the algorithm to be implemented instead of focusing on the concept itself. In order to avoid the difficulties of open loop loop shaping, closed loop loop shaping has been proposed. In the case of stable plants, using a simple YOLA parameterization, it is possible to relate the controller parameters with the closed loop transfer functions. As it can be seen, the transfer function Q, which is a design parameter, appears in a fine form in the closed loop transfer functions. Consequently, Q can be used to shape the closed loop transfer function. As is well known, Control systems are subject to constraints due to its linear nature. The main ones are the complementarity between the different closed loop functions, i.e., one cannot change one transfer function without modifying the others, and the waterbed theorem, among others. The control loop robustness can be calculated through the distance of the polar curve to the minus one point. This is obtained as the infinite norm of the sensitivity function. We can see that all these restrictions and the characterization of the robustness are obtained from observing the closed loop transfer functions. This slide shows a graphical representation of the constraint acting of the complementary sensitivity function and the shape one would like for it. In the lower frequency range, the gain should be over a given rectangle and below 0 dB. This will guarantee good tracking frequency up to that frequency defined by the rectangle. This rectangle is shown in orange. The maximum value of the complementary sensitivity function frequency response is directly related to the system robustness, the bigger the less robust. So, the complementary sensitivity function frequency response should be always below a number bigger than 1. This constraint is shown in green. Finally, in order to guarantee noise attenuation at high frequency, it is necessary that the complementary sensitivity function frequency response is below a number defining the desired attenuation. This constraint is shown in pink in the slide. This nice graphical representation can be used during the design procedure. Similarly, 
These same specifications can be visualized and analyzed in the polar plot. Differently from the Bode plot in here, the same are concentric circles. This complementary representation could be of interest in some case. In a previous work from the authors, an interactively to preform closed loop loop shaping has been introduced. This application can be downloaded for free and can be freely used for teaching purposes. In this work, previously introduced developments are extended to plant with uncertainty. Since now on if will be assumed that the plant is composed by a nominal model plus a multiplicative non-structure uncertainty, which describes how much the plant might vary due to uncertainty at each frequency. Given a closed loop system containing a plant with multiplicative uncertainty in it, the robust stability condition provides a condition which guarantees closed loop stability. The robust stability condition can be decomposed in a constraint to be evaluated frequency by frequency. This constraint has two parts, the right hand side one is given by the nominal plant and uncertainty size. Consequently, they are fixed during the system modeling. The left hand side is a design parameter then can be modified to force the equation to be fulfilled. The complementary sensitivity function depends on the plant uncertainty. Consequently, is not a curve of the Bode plot, it becomes a region. The region is defined around the nominal complementary sensitivity function frequency response. All these concepts have been integrated in a new version of IDC LSD. This application allows to design robust controllers for linear plants subject to uncertainty. In the upper left part of the application, the assumed control scheme is shown. By clicking in each element of the block scheme, it is possible to make it active, so it can be defined or modified. Below this scheme, the active element is visualized and its main parameters can be modified through text fields and sliders. Below are two buttons to indicate the specifications in both the frequency domain and the time domain. Indicators mention whether the different specifications are met or not and give quantitative information on the value of the main parameters. In the lower left part, a pole zero map is shown. It can be used to define the poles and zeros of the different elements or to obtain information about their value. In the right part four different figures are shown. The upper ones correspond to the frequency response while the lower ones are the closed loop system time response. In the frequency response figures, the poles and zeros of the designed elements can be interactively modified. Additionally, the specifications will be visualized in a graphical manner. This figure will be used to perform the interactive controller design. The first step to perform the design is defining the plant model. To do this, it is necessary to click on the plant block. Then a pop-up window appears allowing to select between plants without uncertainty, plants with multiplicative uncertainty and plants with additive uncertainty. In this case we select plants with multiplicative uncertainty. Thereafter, the frequency response ceases to be a curve and becomes a Bode diagram region, which is calculated from the nominal plant model and the uncertainty weighting function. The uncertainty weighting function can be defined directly on the Bode diagram or by modifying its poles and zeros in the poles and zeros editor. Another important part of the application is defining the specifications. In this work we focus on the frequency domain specifications. To define them it is necessary to click the yellow button name frequency specifications. Then a pop-up window appears allowing to active different types of specifications. Firstly, it is necessary to select one closed loop transfer function, the sensitivity or the complementary sensitivity one. In this case the complementary sensitivity one is selected. Later it is possible to include specifications over the low frequency behavior. Its quantitative values can be selected using text boxes or interactively over the Bode plot. Additionally, 
it is possible to define specifications over the high frequency behavior. And finally, robust stability conditions can be activated. Once this has been done, over the bode plots appear different forbidden regions colored in yellow and the region covered by the complementary sensitivity region gray. Once this point is reached, the design consists of trying to place the gray area out of the yellow ones. For this, it is necessary to select the poles, zeros and gain of the Q filter. Since the application automatically shows the effect of the variations in Q on the closed loop system, it is possible to interact with the bend until obtaining the desired behavior. Clearly, it is not always possible to meet the specifications made. Now a completed example will be solved using the tool in order to illustrate the functionalities and the main ideas behind the proposed methodology. A second order system with multiplicative uncertainty is assumed. The assumed nominal transfer function and uncertainty weighting function are shown in the slide. Similarly, the required specifications are indicated in the slide. The first step is defining the type of plant. A plant with multiplicative uncertainty is selected. After, the nominal plant is selected to be a second order system without zeros. Using the text field, the concrete plant parameters are introduced. Finally, the multiplicative weighting function is defined. With that, the region of the boat plot covered by the plant with uncertainty can be observed. Selecting the frequency specifications, desired specifications are defined. Based on these specifications, a set of forbidden regions, shown in yellow, are visualized over the boat plot. To obtain a controller which fulfills the specifications, it is necessary to build a Q filter such that the gray areas keep away from the yellow ones. As it can be seen, the default value of Q fails to achieve this. To obtain an appropriate one, firstly it is selected that the gain of Q at zero frequency is the inverse of the nominal plant gain at zero frequency. This guarantees that the controller will have an integrator, so null steady state error for step references is guaranteed. In order to avoid the intersection with the low frequency box a zero at low frequency is introduced. Although this improves the design, the plant has too much gain at high frequency. To reduce this gain another pole at high frequency is introduced. Finally, the relative position between the poles and the zero is interactively modified in order to force the constraint fulfillment. In this case a controller which fulfills all the conditions is obtained. An interactive methodology to shape the closed loop transfer function taking into account performance and robustness has been proposed. This tool is being used to teach automatic control to master students. Although presented tool is currently used for teaching purposes, the concepts behind them can be used to design controllers and framework which is much simpler than the one based on H-Infinity optimization. Thank you very much for your attention. We will be happy to reply any question or comment. Do not hesitate to contact us.